timing and scale. So to start out, uh, let's define how we're going to uh, describe size. And there's a few choices like uh, volume and weight and so forth, but we'll actually use the simplest uh, definition for when we're describing the size of an, uh, of something, and that will just be the, the length or the height. So uh, in this example, uh, Puss is uh, two feet tall and uh, Prince Charming is six feet tall, so we would say that uh, Prince Charming is three times the size of Puss. Now, the question is, how do we establish a sense of uh, size or scale uh, in animation? Now, one of the simplest uh, physical cues for the size of an object is the timing of the motion when that object is falling. So let me give you an example here. Let's say that a baseball is falling from an apex and it falls uh, its own diameter in three frames. That just happens to be how far it falls given um, its uh, diameter. So uh, if we have a larger object like a, like a bowling ball, a bowling ball is four times uh, larger in size. And it turns out that for a bowling ball to fall a distance equal to its own diameter, uh, that takes six frames. Okay? So if on screen we see something that is uh, falling a uh, distance that's visually the same as its own diameter in six frames, then we know that that object is roughly the size of a bowling ball. In other words, the slower the timing, the larger the object. Uh, let's see some examples here. Uh, there's a um, recording of a marble that has been uh, recorded in slow motion and a bowling ball that's being dropped with normal timing. Okay, So, uh, you know, just looking at these over and over again, if you didn't uh, see my hand there, uh, if you were just looking at the ball, uh, the timing is uh, similar uh, in those two because uh, we've use slow motion for the uh, smaller object and then that uh, makes it look as if it's falling similar to the larger object, the bowling ball. Uh, now this uh, uh, effect is uh, has been used for a long time uh, in films because it allows you to uh, use a scale model and uh, take that scale model uh, film it with a high-speed camera, and then when you play it back at normal speed, uh, the scale makes everything appear much larger. So, uh, for example, if you take a, a scale model and film it at five times uh, normal speed with a high-speed camera, then when you play it back at uh, normal speed, uh, the uh, size of everything appears as if it's 25 times uh, larger. So this was used in many films. Here's just uh, two of them. Uh, here's um, another example of this use. So uh, let's first watch this uh, scene from Jason and the Argonauts in a uh, normal playback. So in this uh, scene, we have uh, this giant who's appearing. Now, of course, this is uh, composited. So we have the people on the boat who are filmed at normal speed, and then the cliffs and the giant are separately filmed with a high-speed camera, and then the images are composited together. So you see the rocks, uh, as they fall, they appear as if they're like boulders. So this gives you more of a sense that these are giant boulders uh, falling because of the timing. Also, the the giant uh, moving slowly, you have more of a sense of uh, a huge scale uh, there. So um, this is basically using the scale model uh, concept for the uh, 
for the rocks and for the giant and then compositing that with the uh, folks uh, filmed uh, on the boat. So we'll uh, just watch a few more seconds of that as they as they pass through the passageway. Um, now, yeah, even though nowadays this might not be done with a scale model per se, you, you would still need to consider this type of uh, uh, timing in creating the animation. Well, well let's um, compare what happens when we play that back at three times uh, the faster, uh, three times faster. Uh, so just watch. And now playing this back uh, at this faster speed, we lose the sense of the rocks being large or the man being large. Now it just looks like a guy in a big uh, pool. Uh, so you see that the, the sense of the cliffs being large and the uh, giant being a giant uh, was entirely due to that uh, timing. You can have fun uh, doing this with other uh, other film clips that you find. Now, the another, it's not just a falling motion, but also a swinging motion. And since the timing of a, of a swinging pendulum is similar to um, gravity, the timing for gravity, we know that a pendulum that's four times longer uh, takes twice as long uh, to swing. So uh, this much longer pendulum uh, swings uh, with a slower uh, period than the short one. And it's the same ratios of timings that we just saw for gravitational uh, timing. Now, that doesn't mean that something that has uh, a giant with long legs will have a slow walking speed because it's not just the timing of the cadence, but also the length of the step. So a pendulum uh, swinging that is four times the length, uh, if we think of that as a leg, then it has four times the step length. So even though it takes twice as long to swing, it covers uh, four times the distance. Uh, so let's um, watch a short clip from uh, the uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, so just uh, watch the um, timing of the motion of these uh, tanks. Uh, these were done with stop motion animation of uh, scale models, but then the timing was adjusted to give you a sense that they are uh, gigantic. So you see that uh, even though they uh, have a lumbering walk, um, Skywalker had to run in order to catch up to the to the tank, and and he's a Jedi. So uh, we'll see another aspect of. Oh, look at that guy walking back there. We'll see another aspect of the timing here in a in a moment, as you see the slow timing of the fall of the uh, destroyed um, at that. Now, if you uh, were watching carefully, you saw this uh, smaller uh, two-legged walker um, go by very briefly. And uh, because there's no other visual cues, uh, the only cue that we have uh, for the size of this walker is the timing of the walk. So it walks faster than the uh, the giant four-legged walker, so we have a sense that it's smaller, uh, but it's still um, somewhat large compared to a person. So, uh, as I said, the um, uh, timing for a swinging motion or tipping motion uh, also follows the same scaling as uh, gravitational timing, so uh, in order to make things uh, f scale four times larger, you want to 
uh, change the timing by a factor of two. And uh, you, uh, you see this in the, the sequence in Madagascar 3, where the plane is uh, flying over uh, Monte Carlo, and there's a long line of uh, monkeys and a few other animals uh, swinging from the bottom of the plane. And then the question is, is that swinging motion uh, believable? Uh, well, here's some uh, reference uh, footage that we s shot for the uh, uh, for the film, and so there's just a metal chain which is being uh, moved back and forth as it's hanging from this little model airplane. So uh, this reference was shot with a high-speed camera that was three times uh, normal speed and then uh, digitally increased further. So it was effectively a high-speed camera shooting at six times normal speed. So then when we play it back, uh, essentially in slow motion, uh, this increases the scale of the swinging motion by a factor of 36, because 36 is six times six. Uh, so. Uh, this means that the two-foot chain that was swinging back and forth uh, has the same timing as a chain that was 72 feet long, and that's you know, roughly the size of that, the chain in that uh, sequence in Madagascar 3. Now, I have to confess we did this after the sequence had been completed, so uh, in a sense this was more to... Um, double check that uh, that animation was indeed done in a, in a believable fashion. So we were very happy about that. So in uh, summary, uh, the timing of falling motion creates a, a scale. Uh, sw uh, slowing the timing by a factor of two increases the scale by a factor of four. Similarly, slowing uh, by a factor of three increases the scale by a factor of nine. So the it, the scale goes as the square of the timing. Uh, this uh, effect is used when uh, scale models are filmed with high-speed cameras and then uh, playing them back it makes the, the models appear uh, much larger. Uh, giant characters tend to have a slow walking cadence and that uh, indicates their, their size. Uh, Having said that, that doesn't mean that they have a slow walking speed. They actually have a fairly high speed because their step length is uh, so large. And then uh, finally, the uh, same timing scale relation uh, that applies to falling motion uh, also applies to swinging and tipping motion and like walking cadence and so forth because all of those are connected to uh, the force of gravity uh, creating the resulting acceleration. So hopefully all of that makes sense and will help you establish scale in your animation.